So in this video, I want to talk to you about should you get a dual JD economics PhD? I know that there are some programs out there that are like that. And actually, one of the followers of this channel, Cortland Rines, actually asked whether they should get a econ PhD with a JD. And I think it is really good. So first of all, I want to tell you the rules of this channel, right? So it's all about reciprocity. If I answer one of your questions, then you have to go do something nice and actually put some comments below on what you did. And it doesn't matter what you do, just go do something nice for somebody else. So whether it's putting some nice comments below, whether it is, you know, just being a decent human being and spreading generosity and just being a nice human being, it's, it's more for you actually, if you do this. And so uh, that's why I want you to do this. So Cortland, um, so first of all, you are a smarty pants. Uh, you, you're doing an econ math double major, total sm uh, smarty pants. And uh, you should be proud of yourself for doing that. That's really hard. And, you know, I wanted to give you encouragement to keep that up. It's very, very tricky to actually do these kind of things. And we're all so proud of you. And your parents must be very, very proud of you. So in terms of thinking about whether you should do a dual JD economics PhD, um, it really just depends on where you want to end up and what you want to do with your career. So, you know, if you are not into law and you're not really curious about law, then don't do a JD. Um, if you're not curious about economics, then don't do an economics PhD. And now we know that's kind of hard to figure out because we're all kind of figuring these things out as we're going in terms of what you're doing. So in order to think about whether you actually like those things, what you might want to do is to take some, you know, legal studies course and, and figure out whether you like that. Um, so obviously you are doing econ, so you understand what econ is about. So you can actually really understand what is, you know, whether you actually like it. And there is... It, 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 what I want to point out is I don't think that there's a real difference in the salary that you're actually going to get once you do this thing if you sort of specialize into certain things, right? So you, if you end up doing a lot more econ at the end of it, then it's not really going to make a matter. Um, it's not going to matter that much because you're just going to become an econ, um, you know, professor or work in, you know, the economics industry of some sort, right? So there's kind of like an, an industry that they have. Or if you're just going to go into, you know, a partnership, if you're going to go and become, a, get a, go, go to a partnership, I don't know if it's going to make a, for a law partnership, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference in terms of what you're doing. However, that being said, I think you can become very, very successful if you do the combined program like that. I think these kind of combined programs are really valuable if you go into certain things, is what I'm trying to say. And it's going to actually lead you to go into certain paths, right? So if you do, um, you know, if you want to go into policy, for example, and you work in the government and maybe work at the World Bank or something like that, that makes sense to do that because there is a lot of law that's involved in those kind of positions as well as having a good understanding of economics is going to be very very good it's going to be very helpful um you know if you want to go in and 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 sort of study the economics and combine that kind of stuff there are people that do that kind of stuff like studying contracts and and whatnot um very influential people that actually study these kind of ideas and and you could do that in school and you could do that as a professor to do that. So if that's what you want to do, I think that's what you'd, you'd be interested in. So I'd encourage you to actually look up where the graduates are going at, at the different programs that you're looking at and what they're actually doing and, you know, what they're studying or what they're interested in. Even if they go into um, industry, they're still going to be kind of studying different things, right? They're, what you do in industry is going to be very similar in a lot of ways because you're still focusing on a certain thing. Um, so here is what it's probably going to offer you if you do that kind of dual program. It's probably going to give you a higher salary um, because you can have a choice. You have more negotiation in going to the different schools, right? So you can go to a law school if they offer you a good salary or go into industry, or you can go into, you know, an econ school or even a business school. You might be able to do that because there is that sort of intersection that's going on there. 
and you might be able to do something on like public policy or do something with business by doing that. So that is that is very valuable and that could actually increase your salary if that's what your end goal is. Um, it might sort of lend more towards policy in a lot of different ways uh, because just because of the, there is that intersection that's going on and that's kind of a rare thing, but it's also really practical uh, in, in terms of the world, right? So you're going to understand the things a little bit more. Um, if you, and, and, and the other thing to realize, if you're just wanting to go into law, um, it's probably going to take you away from doing general law practice and it's it's definitely a lot more specialized and it's going to be a lot more focused on something and so you're probably going to have fewer jobs because the the market is 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 smaller and you might have to be sort of a global citizen just like almost all of us in academia right we're kind of global citizens and we kind of go wherever we can get that that job and that's kind of going to be what you're going to do yeah, um, you'll probably end up living in New York. Very high chance of you living in New York or, or Washington or something like that. Um, or, you know, in, in Canada, Ottawa or Toronto, some big city. And that's going to gear you towards that kind of thing. But if you're interested in research, it's, you know, um, it, you don't need to actually, if you're, or sorry, if you're interested in just doing straight law and you want to practice in your hometown, um, or you want to practice, you know, just basic law, don't do it. It's not going to be worth it. Um, it's not going to help you out in any sort of way uh, because it's just kind of like overkill and uh, it's just going to look weird <laughs> if you do that. And it's going to be hard to do, uh, you know, just general practice at the end of it. This isn't saying you can't. It's just that you're going to be geared and your sort of ideas and mindset are going to be going towards a sort of more specialist career. Um, the other thing that you should think about is actually talk to people that's done that career and done that career path, right? So look those people up on LinkedIn, go talk to the people at the different institutions that have done that. Google people, like just Google, um, you know, um, CV, that's what we call it, or, you know, nobody calls it a resume after, you know, after they do. Uh, once you're in academia, everybody calls it a CV. So it's just basically a resume. And then you look that up, so type in CV, and then you might put star.pdf, and then you'd put um, JD PhD, and you look up where those people are, and that's gonna pop up the CVs that are PDF, that, um, and everybody puts it in a PDF form. I don't know why, it's just kind of a weird standards. So then, then you could see where people are and what they've done with the JD PhD, and especially you could specialize in those different programs that you're looking at, right? And that would be very helpful for you. And you can even just send, shoot them an email. Probably if you send 10 emails, one person is gonna get back to you. And then you can get their insights in terms of what they're thinking. Uh, so now the other thing that I would want you to really stress and think about, it really matters on the program that you go to in terms of these kind of careers, it really truly matters. So if it's kind of a generic, not so good program, um, it's probably not gonna be worth the money that you are gonna spend for it. There's, there's huge variance and I want you to just kind of be well aware of that, that there are institutions that you can pay a lot of money for and they're not going to net you very good returns, right? So as an econ person, you probably really realize this, right? So do that, the stuff that you're taught in econ, go to an Excel spreadsheet and list out these different programs and rank order them in terms of the best possible choices that you can do, right? So use some of that decision theory that you're going to take an econ and list the, those things out and get an idea of what program actually is going to net you a good return and only focus on those particular things, right? There's gonna be huge variance, especially in the United States. Um, there is like really, really huge variance here. Um, you know, I'm Canadian, so I, I don't see that, but we don't see that variance as much in terms of most of the institutions are, are a lot more closer together in terms of quality and the, how much you pay in the United States or in Canada than they are in the United States. So just be very careful with that and um, look at the, the pedigree does matter. Um, unfortunately, it really does help you out in terms of the education that you get. So uh, I just want to be clear with that in terms of where you're gonna go and what you're gonna uh, end up doing at the end of it. And just look to see once you've sort of figured out where you wanna go and you've got a list of say 10 programs or 20 programs that you're in, really interested in, 
then look at where those people actually went to and what they're doing in terms of their career and get a sense of what they're doing. And, you know, just really kind of do some research. Spend an extra year doing that research is going to be more beneficial for you than it is for you to rush into that program. So, you know, work for an extra year, do the research nights and weekends, like do a lot of research nights and weekends is going to help you out. And it's going to do a, a lot for you in terms of where you're going to go. So hopefully this answers your question. Cortland, thanks again for following. I do appreciate it. Uh, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.